Lightning is the result of an electrical charge being built up in the clouds and when the lightning is released it produces a clap of thunder at the same time. Now while this all does seem very simple, how does a cloud build up an electrical charge? What actually is lightning and why does it produce such a loud noise? Well, clouds, especially the huge clouds responsible for thunderstorms, contain rising and falling air currents. Now, the average temperature within a developing thunderstorm can be around about minus 20 degrees centigrade. It means that the water inside a thunderstorm is generally a mixture of ice crystals and super cooled water droplets. The rising air currents tend to contain the smaller ice crystals or water droplets, and the falling air currents have the larger droplets of water. As these pass by each other, occasional collisions occur between the water, results in the rising droplets gaining a positive charge and the falling droplets gaining a negative charge. This rubbing off an electrical charge is similar to that of rubbing your hair on a balloon or wiping a cloth on a rod made from an insulating material. Eventually, inside the cloud, a significant static electrical charge will be built up at the lower half of the cloud. At the same time, a large negative charge in the cloud directly above the ground causes the normally slightly negative charge in the ground to be repelled away from the surface of the soil by the negative charge in the base of the cloud, results in the surface of the ground becoming positively charged. And when the difference in charge reaches a significant extent, a spark from the in the form of lightning equalizes the charges that have been built up. However, it does not always result in the lightning striking the ground. As a negative charge at the bottom half of the cloud and a positive charge at the top. So the lightning, rather than going down from the base of the cloud to the ground, can go from the base of the cloud to the top of the cloud. This normally results in what's known as sheet lightning. So the light that's being created by the lightning is diffused by being seen through the cloud formation. Totally, lightning can jump from one cloud system to another. And even above the clouds, at heights between 20 and 100 kilometers high, there's a whole series of different lightning formations which exist, have various different names like blue jets, elves, and sprites. Most of us will never see these. Instead, we're much more familiar with the bolts and fork lightning which connect with the ground from the base of a thunderstorm. Now, as an electrical charge almost reaches the ground, is met with a positive charge coming upwards, normally reaching upwards from a tree or building, connecting with the lightning just before it touches the ground. Once these have met, there's a temporary and easy path for the charge to flow rapidly between the cloud and the ground. Which stage, the initial faint lightning suddenly glows brilliantly bright, so the charge heats up the air around it to form superheated plasma. It's this superheated plasma we see a flash of lightning, almost like switching on a fluorescent light. And superheated air, of course, has to expand very rapidly. And as it expands, it pushes outwards at right angles to the direction of the lightning strike. This expanding air pressure creates a shock wave, which we can hear as thunder, you can often feel as well. However, since expansion takes place along the entire length of the lightning strike, and the lightning often takes a rather indirect route to the ground, the difference between the observer and different parts of the lightning well, can vary by several miles. It results in hearing rather than just a single bang from thunder, instead it creates a loud bang followed by a prolonged rumbling which can last for a few seconds. Now, the time between the initial flash and the first bang of the thunder can be used to calculate the distance between the observer and the lightning strike, with a five second gap representing approximately one mile distance from the strike. Now, it's also this ability of lightning to superheat anything in its path that makes it so dangerous. Not only can the lightning strikes cause fires or kill people that are directly struck by lightning, but often lightning will strike trees, and as the lightning passes through the tree, it heats up the water inside the tree, causing it to expand rapidly. This expansion is unable to be contained by the tree, and will often explode, showering anyone under the tree with debris. Is this risk of being hit by tree debris is the reason why you shouldn't shelter under a tree during a thunderstorm.